our guest tonight, Bill Reeve. And Bill is with us on Rochester Religion Week as the head of Stratford Hospice Care, uh, kind of a, uh, a special kind of program already, because I kind of put it into two categories in my mind. We have the churches and we have other organizations. And I was glad to be able to get Bill already involved from one of the other organizations, which is interrelated with church needs and, and people's needs. So Bill will be with me tonight. We'll talk with him in just a few minutes. I have the opportunity to talk with Bill Reeve. And Bill, I had only talked to you on the telephone just a few days ago and was pleased that you were so enthusiastic about this. I, I told Bill I'd like to have him come on the program, and he said, oh, sure. It took no convincing at all. So, can you come? Yeah, sure. Be there. Terrific. It's uh, Stratford Hospice Care is the operation that we're talking about. And you, I know, are going into some new uh, volunteer uh, programs, more a push for volunteers, training right. for volunteers. Right. And we'll be getting to that. I think the timing is probably good. Maybe we can reach a couple of people who volunteer for you. Let's talk first about Stratford Hospice Care. Could you just explain for us exactly what that is? Stratford Hospice Care is the organization in Stratford County that provides the volunteer component of hospice care. Hospice is a special philosophy, if you will, of caring for people who have terminal or life-threatening illnesses in advanced stages. Um, it's a special philosophy because it takes into account that people who are dying, people who have terminal illnesses, have a wide variety of needs. Um, which can't be met by any single kind of uh, discipline or, or profession. They have medical needs, um, psychological needs, social needs, spiritual needs, and oftentimes legal and financial needs. Hospice attempts to bring together all of the different people who can fulfill those needs, bring those together in an interdisciplinary team um, with the addition of volunteers, which plays a very important part, which our, our program provides. That is significant to you to have volunteers. Oh, exactly, exactly. Oh. And tries to um, deliver a coordinator, coordinated um, plan of care for the patient and family, bringing together the different services that are needed. This is so that the patient can hopefully remain at home if that's where they want to be, uh, in familiar surroundings, being cared for by their family and the ones that, ones that they love, and doing the things that they want to do with an emphasis on the quality of life rather than on the quantity of life. Now, your office is in Dover, <coughs> is there? No, mm -hmm. Summersworth? Summersworth. So the, the office itself is more of a coordination center? Exactly, exactly. <coughs> we have a very small office, and as we share with two other programs, uh, the Summersworth Daycare and the Meals and Wheels program. So our office is just basically for, for the desk and telephones and, and keeping records. Mm -hmm. All of our work is done out, out in the field. Now. The person that you have as a client or participant in the program is, is someone who is terminally ill, is that right? That's the, the usual definition. Um, we use the term people with life-threatening illnesses in advanced stages. And the reason we use that is that oftentimes people aren't as accepting of in, um, intervention, hospice help. Um, because of the word terminally ill. People mm -hmm. don't often think of themselves as terminally ill. Um, they may have a disease and um, they're fighting against that disease and they think that accepting hospice means that they have to give up and that they're going to die tomorrow or, or whatever. So we're trying to um, take, the, take the route of talking about life-threatening illnesses in advanced stages and the person themselves can therefore define what the advanced stage is for them. Um, okay. It gives them more of a chance more to be involved in where exactly, where exactly they stand. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And that's part of hospice philosophy to begin with, is that people should have uh, control over their lives. They should be making their own decisions about, about their lives and about their treatments, and, and we should be supporting them in those decisions. So um, acceptance of, of a patient and their family, uh, acceptance of their feelings and, and whatever those feelings may be, and um, even accepting them not wanting hospice help is, is part of the hospice philosophy. Good. We'll talk about some of the particulars of, of what you do mm -hmm. and, and how that all works. We'll be back with Bill Reeve from Stratford Hospice Care on Rochester Religion Week.
Welcome back. Mike Hickox on Rochester Religion Week with Bill Reeve. Strafford Hospice Care is the operation we're talking about, which, Bill, you say has a, a great, you mentioned several, a, a great number of, of angles from which you're trying to, to assist people. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you're dealing with, with people who have uh, life-threatening illnesses in advanced stages, I suppose that's, there can be a great variety of things that fit into that. Who gets the person connected to you? Do they decide? Somebody else refer them? I ref it's usually a referral basis, and the referrals come from a wide variety of, of sources, um, primarily from the hospital social services uh, who see patients in the hospital or in, in the oncology clinics. We get uh, referrals from physicians themselves, from the visiting nurses who are seeing people in their homes, Stratford homemakers. Uh, and from family members, relatives who, who know about hospice and who know about the situation and think that we may be of some assistance. Now, what kind of things specifically can you do, your organization do, for somebody? Okay. Um, from the surface, it may not seem like we do a whole lot, but I think that, that that's only from the surface. We provide volunteers. Uh, we, our, our business is to tra recruit train and then assign and support volunteers to the patients and the families. What that means is first I will get in contact with, with the patient and family to let them know the referral has been made and to do an assessment. Based upon my assessment of the situation, I then go back and decide which would be the right volunteer, assuming that the, the fam patient and family want to become involved with our program, um, decide who the right volunteer for this situation would be or volunteers, and then take the volunteers to meet with the patient and family. The things that the volunteers do depend greatly upon what the needs are of the individual case that we're talking mm -hmm. about. And the, the variety of things range from helping with transportation, like you know, taking patients to doctor's visits or whatever, or just going out for a ride, uh, helping with shopping, doing errands, running down to the bank or to the corner store. Um, helping with child care, meal preparation, those kinds of things. Primarily, though, what the emphasis is, is offering practical psychological and emotional support, being a friend, a very special friend at a difficult time, and doing so in a non-judgmental way, accepting the patient and family where they are. And not that the, that, not that the volunteers talk all the time about dying or death. They don't. I mean, that's, that's also, a, I think, a, a myth that people have that, you know, a hospice volunteer is just going to come in and talk about dying all the time. Uh, I think it is that volunteers aren't afraid to talk about dying. They aren't, they won't get afraid and run off if, if the patient wants is to it, talk about is that. Is that part of it? If, if, this, if the person decides at some certain mm -hmm. point they need to talk about that? The Maybe volunteers are, can. The, they're, they're trained in, in listening techniques and, and kinds of interventions that are helpful and they're not afraid to talk about it and they can discuss it if the patient wants to. If they don't, fine. They, they accept the patient where they are and just try to help in whatever way they can. The other major kind of thing the volunteers provide is what we call respite care. Oftentimes, um, taking care of a patient at home can be rather a uh, demanding kind of thing. It can be a 24-hour a day, seven day a week job for, for the primary caregiver. Oftentimes that's a spouse or it could be a, a, um, uh, a child of, of the patient or, or a parent, whatever. Um, and that can be rather wearing after time. And volunteers, after they develop a good relationship, can come in, stay with the patient for two or three or four hours so that the primary caregiver, the caregiver survive, can actually get out. get out and get their hair done or go to a movie or just take a walk or whatever it is that they need to do at that time. Now this is a very special particular kind, kind of concern. How did you get involved in doing this? Well, I first became involved because of sort of intellectual curiosity that I had about hospice. I had read about it and I had done a lot of reading and philosophizing in my own mind and trying to work out my own belief system and I thought I had worked out all my issues about death and dying and had an opportunity to go to Florida and go through a volunteer training program in one of the first hospices there in 1978 which is what I did. And um, after about a year doing volunteer work, my father was diagnosed with having, as having cancer of the pancreas. 
uh, untreatable, um, and had about three months to live, which was a very typical kind of hospice situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and since I was involved, um, uh, my father wanted to, to go back to Ohio, where my family is from, uh, where there wasn't any hospice program, but uh, again, letting the patient make the decision is, is the rule. So we said, okay, Pop, we'll go back to Ohio. We pack everyone up and move back to Ohio and um, help my father go through it with my mother. And um, my father was able to die at home, um, free of pain. And uh, I just felt that that showed to me that's what I need to be doing. And that was 1979. And I've been involved with, with doing hospice ever since. The, the basic concept then is exactly that, to, to be able to allow someone to be at home. Mm -hmm. and, if that's what they choose and, and that's they what they want. want. Instead yeah. of in a nursing home or hospice. Hospital, yeah. Free of pain is another important aspect. I mean, hospice from the very beginning has said that good medical care is very important because you can't deal with the psychological or emotional or spiritual issues if you're in pain. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. You're going to focus on that pain. And there's a lot of things oftentimes that need to be dealt with in, in a person's life that they have a short amount of time to, to take care of all that business. It's very difficult to do that if they're in excruciating pain, which can sometimes occur. So pain control is very definitely an important aspect. Okay, is, the, is that the drug administration? Mm -hmm. That's outside of our purview. I mean, that's yeah. the physician's aspect. And we try to educate physicians on um, good methods of pain control. And we have physicians mm -hmm. cooperating with us. And we try to work closely with, with the patient's own primary physician. Is that somehow different, <clears throat> handled differently at home? Yeah. It, well, the philosophy is a little bit different than typical pain control. Um, the philosophy is that the pain medication is given around the clock. It's not given when the patient feels the pain, because that just gets into a cycle of, of feeling the pain, taking the medication, waiting for the medication to work, and then having a couple hours of, of relief, and then having the pain so again, then taking, over. right. Um, the idea is you take the pain medication on a regular basis every four hours, and the pain doesn't occur once you get to the proper medication level. Now, it seems to be, it, it feels like the, uh, the concept is, is as whole as can be. Uh, mm. Taking a look at, at all the areas that are troubling or difficult and being able to, exactly. to touch on those. You're operating with volunteers, and in fact, I know, and we'll, and we'll get into mentioning it, you'll be, you're ready to train, mm -hmm. train some more of them. What kind of people are, are volunteers in this? And are they are they very special people? Are they usually people that, have, that like you have had some kind of an experience with someone close? Who I would say the majority, yes. Yeah. The majority, so they've yes. They've seen the significance yeah. of doing it. Or they've they've had a situation where there wasn't hospice available, and they saw what kind of things went on that didn't need to go on, um, the kinds of pains that were suffered, either psychologically or, or physically. Maybe they would have wanted it to be done better. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, now I said very special people, somewhat facetiously, but not really. I, I truly believe, without you know patting my own self on the back, that, like that, it, yeah. <laughs> that hospice people are uh, they're a special kind of, of folk. I mean, not everyone can deal with issues of dying very openly, and that's why it hasn't been dealt with for so long in our society. Yeah, um, the whole concept, at least for us, mm -hmm. is is yeah. new here. Yeah, they have a lot of compassion, a lot of. Um, Caring, and I think that's the most important thing. It's one of the, the famous hospice phrases, when curing is no longer possible, caring is. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people draws them to hospice, that, that they can give that extra measure of comfort and care. How many volunteers do you have? How many clients do you have? We've, we've trained over 60 volunteers over the past two years. Okay, About 30 of those are really active. Um, there are about 15 are active at any one time. Okay, Our caseload averages around 10 to 12 active cases. We've had over 140 referrals over the past two years. Mm -hmm. um, Stratford County has one of the highest cancer incidence rates in, in New Hampshire and in the country. Uh, and there is, that is the, the bulk of our, our cases is cancer, about 90 percent. 
How much time does a volunteer spend per week or month or however you that, make it? That, it, it's really hard to give any set answer on that because it, it varies. Uh, it varies from case to case, it varies within the case, uh, and it varies as the, the volunteer has time available. We give a, uh, an average of four hours per week that, that we would like people to, to spend once they are assigned to a case. Um, sometimes it's much more than that. Um, okay. you know, when it's down to the last days, you may be there five, well, six, well, seven, eight hours, whatever. Okay. Thank you, Bill. We'll be back with Bill Reeve again. In just Welcome back. I'm Mike Hickox. Bill Reeve is my guest. And we've been talking about Stratford Hospice Care. The, uh, some of the particulars of this, I, I wish we would have an extra half hour. Is that two hours or three hours? Yes. But <laughs> very interested. You, you brought up a lot of things that we've hardly touched on, just got started. Uh, I want to get on, in fact, as, as you offered, onto some of the spiritual dimension. Uh, just before we do that, uh, I want to make sure we cover this. You have a request out for additional volunteers for new mm -hmm. training program. Mm -hmm. When does that start? Uh, the orientation session that precedes the training will be April 4th, which is a week from, no, two weeks from today. Um, that will be held at the Flanagan Center in Summersworth. Um, the training itself will start the next week, April 11th, and will run for 10 weeks uh, until June 13th. Okay, ten weeks of training. Ten weeks of training, two and a half hour sessions. Well, yeah. that there's, there is re yeah. that much required. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's um, it's a major commitment, basically yeah. that we're asking of people. Uh, it's not a um, it's not a simple thing to go into a patient's home who is dying and and be there for them and, and for us to feel comfortable sending patients to uh, sending volunteers to do that, we need to feel that they have been exposed to all the different issues that they may um, come up against when they're when they're in the patient's home and some ways to deal with them. And they'll feel yeah. comfortable that they can handle yeah, it. Yeah, hopefully. Now, the, again, the spiritual aspect, how, how do you, the volunteers in particular, uh, how do they know they can deal with, with those issues that would come up? Mm -hmm. um, of course, that's going to vary per volunteer also in, in their how comfortable they are in dealing with spiritual issues. Some are more comfortable in, in that regard than others. Uh, I think hospice is unique in the fact that it does take into consideration the spiritual aspect of man in, in the human service field. Most, most human services uh, tend to shut that aspect off and don't talk about spirituality or God or religion well, or anything. Yeah, I know a lot of people <clears throat> don't feel that it would be their part to, mm -hmm. to step into that. Right. Now, we feel it is. Um, because the end of a life is a spiritual issue. Uh, mm -hmm. It may not be for everyone, but for, for most people it is, it is also a spiritual issue. And we have to recognize that. Um, we don't have to force everyone to consider it, but we can be present and, and accept, uh, accept them if they do want to talk about that. Uh, if we find that that is a, a special area of interest for a patient, um, that would be a signal to me to match them up with a volunteer who has a, a similar religious background and, and uh, kind of uh, interest in, in that type of thing. Doesn't it, uh, isn't that something that would, that would be appearing on a regular basis when, when you're dealing with patients? I mean, like, I mean, you've been doing this for quite a while, but the concerns that they would have at the point when they're under, they have the hospice care, um, they know they may soon die. Is what are the things that normally come up? When you, are you usually dealing with with questions of a lot where, of, where am I going from here? And sometimes um, I think the more pressing question a lot of times is why me? You know why why is God doing this to me, or or is God doing this to me? And and you know what is going to happen? Uh, those kinds of questions. Are there feelings sometimes of, of whether for some reason I, I deserve this or getting oh, punished? That, you know? Oh, yeah. Very definitely. So Very definitely. Especially with people who have perhaps done some things in the past that they're not too happy about or not too uh, proud of and um, think that you know maybe the past is catching up with them and they are being punished. That does happen. And then there are other people who say, you know, I've lived a good life and I've done everything right. I've you know, played by the rules. Why is this? 
And it's, you know, it's not an easy thing to say, well, you know, death is a natural thing and it occurs to everyone and, and all those good kinds of things. It, um, not when it gets down to one particular no, person. No, no, not when it's dealing with cases. Now, how, if somebody has a particular interest in hospice care, how do they get in touch with you? It's very easy. Call 692-2825. And if you're not there, the machine is. I know that. <laughs> Hope, well, yeah, there is a, an answering machine that's there 24 hours but a day. But you can call 3 in the morning if you right. want to. And 3 in the morning, message. right, 5 o'clock in the morning, and leave a message. Um, we do try to have the office staff between 9 and 3, and between Monday through Friday. We're not always successful in doing that because I have, I'm the only paid employee of Stratford Hospice Care, and all of our volunteer, all of our office staff is also, also volunteer. Um, and we don't have all the slots covered uh, all the time. So, but uh, our office again is in the Flanagan Community Center in Summersworth, and the telephone number is six nine two two eight two five. Okay. Thank you, Bill. My pleasure. I'm My pleasure. Very glad you were here again. Or we were just touching the surface. Yes. Of